Hi, I'm Earl Gress with Rayco Manufacturing. Today we're going to talk about the daily and hourly maintenance and operation of the C100 LGP steel track mulcher and the C100R rubber track mulcher. The C100s come standard with a 12,000 pound worn winch with 75 feet of half inch cable. To freewheel the cable out, you open up the access panel on top, flip the lever up, pull the cable out, hook to your tree, whatever you're going to use as a to help get you out and then flip that cable back, flip the lever back down and run the uh, cable back in. The cable should never be used as a tow rope to get this vehicle to move. If you're going to use another vehicle to tow the machine out, you have to hook a chain up to the big eyelet on top of the winch. On the back of the winch, the fair leads and the housing are cut, this is cut away. So when the, if you have to do a 90 degree pull in either direction, the cable's not cut on the sharp metal of the housing. But once you're done with a pull like that, you need to run the cable straight out and run it back in straight so it's wound up right for the next time. At the rear of the machine is the engine radiator. This door, as air passes through it, catches the big material. The finer materials that pass through there get caught in the waffle screen. The waffle screen then is easy to remove and clean. This needs to be done several times a day, maybe at lunch, maybe at the end of the day, but it cannot be forgotten about. If it's not clean, then the engine compartment temperature climbs, the machine's not gonna cool, and the, and the air amb ambient temperature sensor is gonna go off in the cab. Inside the right-hand comp engine compartment door is the air ambient temperature sensor. This sensor is, is watching and monitoring the engine temperatures. If the alarm goes off for this sensor, it indicates that the compartment temperature is too high and above 220 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's caused by the rear of the machine being plugged with debris. And what the operator needs to do is leave the machine run, open up the doors on both sides of the engine bay, open up the back, and clean off the waffle screen, and then let the machine cool down naturally. The C100 comes with a Kubota 100 horsepower diesel engine. Daily, you have to check the engine oil. It's on the right-hand side of the engine. The dipstick has got indicator marks for low and high. It's one gallon in between the hash marks. It is 15W40 oil. This oil needs replaced every 250 hours of operation. It needs done when the machine is new at 100 hours. The hydraulic oil level is on the right-hand side also just on the outside of the frame. It's got an indicator on it, decal, with yellow, green, and red. The normal operating range is in the green. The red means it's low, yellow means it's over full. It is a, it, it's a daily check, it has to be done cold. Once the machine warms up, it'll actually raise up, the oil level raise up into the yellow, and you have to be on level ground when you check it. Part of your daily maintenance is going to be to inspect the, the engine. You're going to be looking for leaks, hose chafing, wiring that might be loose, clamps that may be loose. Don't be afraid to grab connections and make sure things are tight. Every day you need to be checking your belts, your alternator and your air conditioner are on the right hand side of the engine compartment. If at any time you hear them squealing, you need to come back and check for deflection. The deflection that you should be monitoring would be the thickness of the belt. If it deflects more than the thickness of the belt, it needs to be adjusted. The alternator has an easy banana strap adjuster on the top. You loosen the bolt on the bottom, pull the alternator back after you loosen this top bolt, tighten it back up. The air conditioner is much simpler. It has two jam nuts on the front and two jam nuts on the back side of the adjuster screw there. You loosen up the, loosen up the front side, tighten the back, and that will rock the compressor back to tighten the belt. Also on the right hand side of the engine bay is the hydraulic filter system. The two filters are spin on here, they're charge filters. We have a canister filter here in the center. This canister filter is cleaning all the oil coming back from the hydraulic motor before it goes back to the pump. These filters cannot be crossed to something else. You need to specifically use the Rayco filters. Each machine comes with three new filters in the safety sales kit. We recommend these filters be replaced at the first 100 hours and then every 500 hours afterwards. In the event one of the filters would plug early, 
each one has an indicator on it. If one of these indicators would go off, it would mean one of the filters is plugged. Rayco only uses one light for each of those three filters, so you would have to change all three at that time. To try to isolate one filter, you could unplug the sensor to see if the light goes out. When removing these filters, it's important you take the, the pressure out of the hydraulic system by removing the cap. The filter for the cap is on the back of the machine behind the battery. The cap fits underneath, the wrench fits underneath the cap to open it. That will take the pressure out. When you do the filter change, it's important you take these two off first and then go after the steel canister last. Do not spin these on until you have him changed. It's very difficult to get to that heavy steel canister to get it out without removing the two charge filters first. Always use a can, plastic can, and rags to cover the computer right here to catch any oil that comes off the filters. It's important when you do change the filters that you put them back in dry and then you, you bump start the machine four times, which means you start it, let it run for a second, shut it off, restart it for a second, shut it back off, and you start to extend those start-stop intervals at least four or five times and that helps burp the oil through the filters and prevents cavitation. And then once the machine is running, then slowly move the machine forward and back, raise up and down the loader arms, and then slowly engage your head to make sure that purges all the rest of the air out before you go back to work. The hydraulic system is 20 gallons. It's filled with an AW46 oil or an ISO46 oil, whatever you're used to hearing. Uh, it, the interval on the oil change for the hydraulic reservoir is every thousand hours. And we do also recommend an oil sample at that time. If contamination is found, the tank needs to be, uh, the, the, the suction strainers need to be pulled out of the tank so the tank can be wiped clean. Anytime any work is done on the hydraulic system and you need to open up the reservoir, the wrench to open it up is at the back of the machine behind the battery located by the work, rear working lamp. You take the wrench off, put it underneath the cap, unscrew it to open it, and then when you're done, you tighten it back up until it ratchets. Put the wrench back underneath it. Give it no more than a quarter turn tight and check that it doesn't unscrew by itself. Daily, you should ratchet that to keep the dirt out of it. Also on the right-hand side of the engine compartment is the test port adapters for the hydraulic system. Refer to the service book for each individual testing of the circuit. We also have the 12-volt battery. Anytime welding's done on the machine, it's extremely important that both cables be unhooked from the battery. And always weld and put your ground near where you're welding so you're not running stray voltage through the system. The computer is right here. We call this the, the Rayco Logic Module. The circuit breaker is right here. The circuit breaker protects the key switch. It has a reset button on the bottom side. The computer and the circuit breaker, this area should not be pressure washed. When you're doing your, your maintenance on this machine, whether it's in the shop or in the field, you blow this off with air and then use a garden hose to rinse it off. Also part of your daily inspection is going to be on the left hand side of the engine compartment. Over here we've got the majority of the fuel system. We've got where we put the oil in the engine. We've got our final fuel filter, our fuel pump, our water separator, our air filters, and our water valves to turn on the heat. And this is where we're going to fuel up the machine. Starting with the fuel system, our fuel water separator has a drain on it. Every day you're going to look for water and contaminants in the bowl. If the bowl needs drain, you open up the drain, vent the top to let some air in to drain the contaminants out, tighten it back up, and what you have to do after that is just turn on the key. And when you turn on the key without starting it, the electric transfer pump will, pre, will reprime that filter full. As the fuel is pushed through that fuel water separator, it goes into the final filter. The final fuel filter is right on the engine. Those filters need replaced every 250 hours. To fuel up the fuel system, the can, we have an upper tank and a lower tank. This upper tank has no screen, 
So whatever dirt you guys put in this machine gets right sucked into this filter. So be very, very cautious about getting dirt inside the, inside the fuel can. It takes 40 gallons to fill it up. As it's reading on, on the gauge, it will read full for several hours until it comes off of this tank and starts using the fuel out of the lower tank. When this machine uh, indicates that it's at half a tank, it's going to be very low on fuel. You'll be down to the last maybe 10 gallons of fuel in the machine. So if you're driving downhill, there's a good chance you will run out of fuel. So when you get to a half a tank, consider it empty and get it, get it fueled back up. You can run easily all day before you get to half a tank of fuel if it's filled up in the morning. Also on this side is the air filters. We have a small one. The small air filter is for you in the cab. This filter cleans the air going into the cab for the air conditioning or the heat. To clean these, <clears throat> you step away from the engine and you smack it to clean it off, whether it's on the tracks and you ro rotate it in your hand and knock the dirt out. We do not recommend you take high compressed air to these filters. This small air filter here, the pre-cleaner cleans the air going into it. It does not have a inner air filter. So put it back on, you rotate it, push it back in, take the cap back in place and pop it back in, on by smacking both sides of it, leaving the yellow drain at the bottom. The big air canisters for the engine. We have three latches on it to keep it closed. This filter I do not want you taking out every day, but I do want you to inspect it. Depending on how or what you're grinding, it may get dirty quick, it may not get dirty at all for several hundred hours. But as you, when you open it up, you can see the media real easily all the way inside. Tap it. If it's very dirty and a lot of stuff's coming out and it needs to be clean, then you rotate it and pull it out. Walk to the front of the machine on the mower and tap it out. Rotate it and tap it out. I still do not recommend any high compressed air on this filter. You will blow holes right into the paper and destroy the engine very quickly. The inner air filter does not get cleaned, but it gets replaced every second time this one gets replaced. Again, do not cross-reference any of these filters. The numbers are right on them. Your dealer will support the filter. We have the filter too. At, at, on the uh, cap for the air cleaner is the duct bill. Daily you want to open that up and keep the dust out of it. On the left hand side of the engine compartment are the valves for the, for the heat for the cab. When you want heat in the winter time, you turn the valves in line with the hose. When air conditioning is wanted, you want to leave the valves at a 90 degree, the handles at a 90 degree to the hose. That shuts off all the antifreeze going to the cab. Anytime you need to order parts or have service work done on the C100, you need to reference the serial number. It's located here and inside the left hand of the engine compartment, right below the fuel transfer pump. Throughout the day, track maintenance is gonna be an important part of taking care of the machine. We have a remote grease block that we use to help do our track tensioning on the steel track machine. When checking the tension on the track, the slack in the chain is determined with a straight edge across the sprocket in the upper roller. Midpoint, you want to have between one and two inches of slack front and back. This one's currently averaging about an inch and a half per, per, per span. If the track tension is too loose and you need to put some grease in the front idler, Use the hose that comes with the machine, slide it over the grease fitting on the remote grease block, hook your gun up to it, pump grease into it until, it, until you have the proper slack in your chain. If there's not enough slack in the chain, you wanna let some grease out. There's a wrench on the back side of the block, fasten to it. You can unscrew the grease fitting to let grease out. Also on this remote block to help 
with the maintenance of the of the track chain is a is a relief. This relief is set to allow grease to come out in case there's a violent action on the front piston. Violent meaning maybe running into a stump, over tension on the chain, a log getting jammed in the chain, something that would cause very high pressure on that front grease piston. This will allow that grease to come out, relax the chain, and hopefully prevent any failures. Also on the block is a transducer. This transducer takes a snapshot of this track chain tension every five minutes. If the tension is too high, it kicks on a light and it will tell you whether it's a left or right track doing it. Each side of the machine is equipped with this remote grease block. Routinely during the life of the machine, the track pads need to be checked for torque. The pads should be torqued to 114 foot pounds. You can do a random check of these, of these bolts every time the service is done on the machine. If any are found loose, then all pads need to be retorqued. The master link is at the bottom of the machine right now. The master link is where you would split the chain to do any maintenance on the front idler or maybe your, your bottom rollers, your top idler. You'd move the, the master link to the front roller and take the bolts out of the pad of that master link and then the two halves will separate. The torque on that master link is 133 foot pounds. When the machine is new, that needs to be done several times in the first couple days to be checked for torque. If that is forgotten about, it could loosen up and destroy itself. The final drive at the back of the machine has two plugs in it for checking and filling and draining. And this position is where you'd fill. This would be your oil level. So the oil level would be halfway across the face of it. To drain it, you'd put one of these holes at the bottom and open up one here and it would drain out. You always fill it with one at the top and one at the three or the nine o'clock position. The intervals on the final drive is every week, for every 50 hours, you wanna check the level. Every 500 hours, it needs new gear oil. It is a 90 weight synthetic. Daily, you're gonna to wanna to check the, the rubber track machine, its tension also. What we've done is we've curled the head completely down to raise the front end of the machine up so we can check the tension on the bottom side of the track. So by standing at mid-span, third roller back, we're looking for half inch to three quarter gap between the bottom of the roller and the top of the rubber. In the event it's too tight, you wanna let some out. Behind the cover is the grease fitting to let grease out. It's also the place where you'd add grease to the machine to get the tension where, where you need it to be. On the final drive of the rubber track machine, this is where you'd check your level. The hole here at the bottom be where you drain it. The interval on this is every, every 500 hours. You wanna check the level every 50 hours. We're using a synthetic 90 weight gear lube in this. When you go to fill the final drive, you rotate the machine to bring the fill to the top and the level to the side, whether it be three or nine o'clock. You fill at the top until it runs out. Daily greasing of the machine is very important. The machine has grease fittings at each end of the loader arms, each end of the lift cylinders, and at each end of the roll cylinder. On the mower, we have a remote grease fitting on the back side on the right side. On the left side of the mower, right on the bearing of the rotor itself, is the grease fitting for the other side of the mower. Underneath this black cover is the grease fitting for the overhung load adapter. The mower bearings, the ones on each end, need grease twice a day. It, at lunch and it, at the end of the day, they need at least 15 to 20 pumps when you do them. The overhung load adapter needs 10 to 15 pumps a week put in it. I've removed the top cover so we can clearly see what I was talking about with the grease fitting on the overhung load adapter. Behind that cover was this fitting. That fitting's got a hose attached to it that goes to the bearings inside the overhung load adapter. This overhung load adapter has a grease relief in it. Rayco's maintained this full of grease before you got the machine and you need to keep it full of grease. The best way to do that is that 10 to 15 pumps a week should keep that full. Every time a service is done, 
the cover needs removed and the box needs to be filled completely full of grease until it purges back out that grease relief again. That will ensure that that is staying full of grease. While we're in here, let's look at the, at the belt adjustment. We've got two bolts related to holding this motor assembly and overhung load adapter stationary for the belt. A jack screw to do our adjusting of the belt. When belt tension is checked and we need to make an adjustment, we're going to loosen up our center bolt with an inch and an eighth wrench. We're going to loosen it up one turn. This inner top bolt against the wall, one full turn, and then you'll adjust this Allen stem, which is a 3 8 Allen. You'll give it at most one half turn clockwise and then retighten your center bolt here and your top bolt here and then recheck your tension. Doing belt adjustment on the C100 Predator head is very simple. I've removed the cover for clarity here. The cover has a black panel on the side that you would take one bolt out to, to gain access to reach in here and feel your tension on the belt. To check it with the gauge, the gauge and the plate is provided with each machine. The gauge tests the, the tension of the belt by pushing down on it and it reads how hard you push down by this little, small o-ring sliding up. To set our tool up to get, to get our tension checked, we take our larger o-ring on our inches scale here, we rest our belt tension tool directly on the belt at a 90 degree angle with the belt and we set our larger o-ring at the top of the weldment. That's approximately at the two and a half inch mark. We're going to press down a quarter inch. To get our, get our quarter inch deflection, we're going to lay the quarter inch plate across the width of the belt, set our tool on the plate. This now has raised up my large o-ring one quarter inch above its original position. I'm going to hold on to the plate and press down to the original height that O-ring was set at. So what I've done now is I've deflected the belt a quarter inch and now I'm going to read the scale in pounds. It's right at 10. So it was 10 pounds at a quarter inch deflection. That's exactly where we want this belt maintained. If, if the belt is too loose, that's when you'd go in here, loosen up those two big bolts, adjust your 3 8 Allen jack screw a half a turn, tighten that back up, come back out here and recheck your tension. Never do this warm, always check it cold. When the machine's new, it needs done every day for several days and then it's going to be a slow wearing belt and cogs and it will just need that, that actual adjustment done at service intervals. If the cleaning needs done in here, the cover can come completely off, get all the mud and dirt out of this. Always maintain this cover so no contaminants are getting in here. This is a definite must check every day when it's new and every week thereafter to check your deflection. The C100, C100 mulching head comes with 36 sharp carbide teeth on it. These teeth are the Quadco beaver teeth. They're held in with two 5 ace bolts with conical serrated washers on, on the bottom side, on the back side of the heads. These teeth are reversible. What you want to do is maintain the torque on these, these teeth to 220 foot pounds. When you, re, when you swap the teeth, reverse them. Make sure you retorque re them to 220. If you're replacing them, replace the hardware also. Do not just reuse the hardware on these teeth. If the carbides become knocked off or dull, the tooth will wash away. What you want to do is maintain that tooth integrity and make sure it does not get into the holder of the tooth. If this holder starts to wash away because the carbide's missing, you're going to throw the machine out of balance very quickly. We're up on top of the machine now. This is the upper limb riser assembly. In here we've got our radiators. We've got our hydraulic cooler at the back our second engine radiator at the front part of this. Our surge overflow tank right here for antifreeze and on the underside of these coolers is the air conditioning condenser. The antifreeze check 
daily is going to be here in this sight window. You want to make sure the sight window is flooded towards the top. If antifreeze is needed, it's added here in the surge tank. If this tank becomes low, there's a sensor in it that will automatically shut the machine down requiring antifreeze to be put back in it. As far as maintenance of this upper cooler system, you're going to remove, to blow it out, you're going to remove your waffle screens from underneath and blow straight down with air to clean out the fins. If washing is done, all the washing is done from up above and then you allow the machine to dry for 45 minutes while it's running before you go back to work. And that will help steam all the moisture back out of the radiator so it doesn't produce mud in the fins. To close the lid, you raise up, set it back down, and put your linch pins back in. And then using the handheld grabs on the side of the machine, you egress your way down. Starting the machine, you have to be inside on the seat with the arm, arm bar down, seat belt on, and the door closed. All these safeties are related to the seat belt light up on the dash. If the seat belt light is red, one of these safeties is not fastened. And then starting it, you reach up and turn the key to the on position. Straight up is off, on all the way around is start. Once it's started and all your safeties are still hooked, your joysticks will be live. And the, mower, the mower will be able to be ran. On the left here engages the mower. The right control engages the throttle. When you start the process of mulching, you start it at an idle, the engine, move, your thr move the throttle on the mulcher to full Bring your RPMs up to full throttle or whatever RPM you want to mulch at. When you go to disengage the mulcher, you'll bring your throttle, engine throttle back down to idle and then disengage your mulcher. Your joysticks, your left one propels the machine forward and back, left and right. The front trigger button is your two speed. On your right joystick, up and down on the on the head of the of the loader arms and then to curl the mower out or in is the left and right motion of the joystick to open and close the flap on the front it's the top thumb buttons open and close on the rest of the cab we've got our winch and wiper to the left of our door we've got our Indicator lights for our track tension and our engine compartment monitor here on the right side of the door. Our dash control up here, which indicates our seat belt, two speed, engine oil pressure, our water temperature, our hydraulic temperature, our fuel level, our battery condition, the hours, the RPMs. Any faults that came up that will come up will come up on this dash. They will be red. When a fault comes up, you'll get a solid alarm on the by the key switch. If any faults come up for the track or the compartment temperature, you'll get a beeping alarm right next to the lights indicator lights here on the right side. For air conditioning in the cab, we got two fan switches: a white fan switch and a blue fan switch. The white fan switch has three positions, but we're only using the medium and high speeds of that switch. When this switch is on medium or high, we're bringing in fresh air from the engine compartment, small filter, into the AC box behind the seat. This helps pressurize the cab and keep the dust out. The blue fan switch then controls the flow of air that you feel on your shoulders, or maybe the air coming out the front vents to defrost the front window. The air conditioning switch, when it's down is off, when it's up it's on. If heat is required, you turn your AC off, turn on your blue valves in the engine compartment so, to allow antifreeze to come into the heater core so that you get heat in the cab. Air conditioning 
also has a recirc filter behind the seat. It's just a foam filter that's easily clean with water. Squeegee it out with your hands and put it back on. It's held on with two black knobs behind the seat. When air conditioning is used, your front vents for defrost need to be closed. The vents behind my shoulder need to be open so to blow the cool air right on your shoulder to get maximum air conditioning in the cab. On days that are not dusty, you do not need to run your fresh air fan switch, the white one. You can leave it off. But on days that are very dusty and dust is migrating in the cab, it's advised to keep that on medium or high. Always keep your windows closed when you're mulching so debris doesn't come in and get on you. The controls up here on the left, the switch, our headlight switch is on our left. Our reversing fan switch is in the middle and then a permanent flow switch is next to it. The permanent flow switch is tied in with my flap switch momentary buttons here on my right joystick. While we're mulching, we're only going to use the momentary buttons to open and close the flap. The permanent flow switch is used for another attachment and not used for mulching. The reversing fan switch is used to reverse the fan that's in the limb riser behind the cab. That will help blow off the waffle screens that are on the bottom side of the limb riser of any debris that's catching in there. To reverse the fan, the machine needs to be running. At an idle, you hit the top of the switch one time. And then you throttle up the engine two-thirds and listen. And you will hear the engine, fan, that fan up there, slow down, change its direction, blow down forcefully, slow down again, and go back to its original flow. At no time during that process, which is about 30 seconds, do you shut the ignition switch off. You let the machine go through that whole process by itself. That only needs to be done a couple times a day, and that helps keep that upper limb riser cool. So anytime you see your hydraulic temperature climbing, your engine water temperature climbing, maybe AC isn't working quite efficiently as it should, look behind you, look at the waffle screens. If they're plugging up, you stop mulching, you reverse, you let it go through its process, and then you go back to work. If you're driving when you hit that button, when the pilot pressure drops to zero to shift the fan into, re into its reverse position, the joysticks go dead. It's a, it's a violent stop on the machine, so you need to be sitting still while it's doing that. Inside the cab, we've got two exits out besides the front door. In the event of a rollover or a tree across the front of the machine and you cannot get out, we've got escape hatch in the ceiling. Red knobs, you unscrew. Take off the red plate. You do this on each side. You raise up and you throw this hatch out of the way. It's important you get familiar with these escape routes before you start mulching so you know exactly how to get out when you need to get out. If the machine's on fire, if it's on the side, it's underwater, whatever the reason, you need to get out immediately. You need to know what you're doing blindfolded. The back window opens up easily by pulling down the two knobs. Take your elbow and kick the window out. Pick it up off the, off the metal and throw it out of the way, crawl out the back. But be careful when you crawl out the back, you're going to be crawling on top of the engine bay, which is going to be hot. The exhaust is hot, but if it's your only way out, it's a good way out. <clears throat> the side window is open, but there's no way out of here. To clean these, you remove the track on the side with the two knobs. Pop the track out, slide the windows to the center, and take them out for cleaning. Very simple. This cab is ROPS, FOPS, and OPS certified. The door is made, has inch and a quarter Lexan, the cage on the front. This cage easily opens up to get to the wiper to do maintenance on the cleaning. Use the non-abrasive cleaners on the Lexan when you're, when you're washing it. Anytime you're using your wiper, 
make sure you use the washer. This door is quite heavy. When you, when you get in the machine, the door has a tendency to follow you in, so make sure you keep a hand on it when you get in. Do not let it close on your hand. This door will cut your hand if it catches you.